Hey everyone, it's Joe Glass from the Automator, and I'm talking to Jean Alain. He's the author of Quick Access Pop Up, but today he's doing an intro to his tool, Quick Access Clipboard. Is that still the? Yes. It was a working title, but it's, be it's becoming the real, uh, the permanent name of this uh, new software. In fact, thank you, Joe, for helping me uh, doing this video. That is intended at this time for beta testers because the product is not finished. It's been in alpha test, so uh, me testing ju with just a few users. But now I'm ready to launch it to a larger audience in order to get more feedback, more bug reports. And uh, I thank the beta tester who will uh, look at this video and test the software. And you will see it's fun to do beta testing if you haven't done that. Uh, you see the product evolve. You can influence the product also, giving your ideas. Often I need some, some input, opinions, and so I could do some polls or just ask questions. How would you call this feature? Because sometimes you can have various options. So it's good to have a, a group of users that uh, will help you help me doing that. Yeah. So, and for those that are just watching that, you know, um, are by normal audience, right? I mean, a lot of you guys might actually be interested in this tool. But at the same time, think about this video and his questions he's bringing up as things you should be considering when you're going to launch a tool, right? Understanding how people, they might word things differently. And it can greatly change. Like, I know stuff in QAP. I've said, where is this? And you're like, it's right here. I'm like, oh, I, I never would have, you know, understood from that yeah. name for me personally. Yeah. But yeah, it's really yeah. good info. It's very good to have these feedbacks from users. And, and you'll and never bring everybody. Right, yeah. right. It's the other yeah. big one. Of course. And, and there's always bugs. There's always bugs in, always. Any, in any product, but in beta phase, there are bugs. So uh, there, it can be bugs for the new features because I will release new uh, version of the beta uh, release every week, for example. So there could be new features to test, but also to see if everything else is still working because often something that you change here can have a side effect somewhere. So that's why it's important to have uh, good beta testers doing bug reports that could be can be done on the quick access pop-up forum. There's a section about quick access clipboard on the QAP forum. So uh, let me share my screen, Joe, and I'll um, show you this product. So you can launch it from, you can have it to be launched automatically when you start Windows, and then it will be in your tray here. So with this icon here, or you could use um, shortcuts, control middle mouse by default to see the editor, there are two windows. So control with middle mouse button or alt middle mouse button to see the rules editors. The first one is to see the, the rules manager and the first one is to see the editors or you have also uh, odd keys if you, um, yeah. if you prefer. And, and, and do me a favor and just clarify what your tool is because yeah. it, it, you know, people think of clipboard and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have a clipboard history and that's not what your tool is. Yeah, it's not a clipboard history. There's, uh, there's already a lot of good tools doing that and, and quick access clipboard uh, can work together with these products. The idea is, is that with the work I do as when I do programming or also I, I do uh, writing music, writing about music, so editing text, often having to take pieces of information here and there and put it together and have it not longer than a given number of characters. So I was always using, of course, a, a text editor to do that and the clipboard cut and, cut and paste from here and there. And I, at some point I say it would be so much easier if I could be able to edit the clipboard directly to so to work more closely with the clipboard. So that's the first window of this tool. It's an editor that is directly connected to the clipboard. So for example, if I, I made it, I made this window is being always on top. So if I copy text here, let me copy some text here and it control C, it's automatically reflected here, here in the clipboard editor in read-only mode first, uh, but then you can click on edit here and modify the text and use different options to do cut paste, fine, you know, so you can work as in a, in a regular editor, except that once you're finished, so let's say that I wanted just to keep this here, when I click when I click save clipboard, it will save this text to the clipboard. So when I open notepad, do I have a notepad here? I'll take this one here. So I have notepad. When I paste, it pastes the text that was 
saved here from the clipboard. So for example, if I take pieces of text and I know I don't have to make it longer than 250 characters, I can work here in the editor doing all my work and when I'm finished, I click save and then I'm ready to paste it in the destination program. That can be a form on um, a web page. that can be uh, a field in iTunes where you can put notes. So any destination, uh, but in this destination, you don't have all the tools to facilitate the editing. So in a, in a, um, a form, uh, for, in the form a text box, you can, don't have a menu to do fine and things like things like that. So you can, of course, do it in a text editor, but you will find it very handy to have the, the capability to do it directly in this uh, clipboard editor. So it's a regular editor. So you can um, here you can open, save, have different options. Um, I'll come back to the edit menu, which is uh, the one that where we have more to see, but there are some options where you can select the hot key. You can open the ini file at this time to, to change other options. Uh, in the final version, there will be an option dialog box where you can change everything, but for now you can change it directly in the ini file. And you can switch to the other windows, which, which is the rule manager that we'll see in a minute. And there are some help links here. But here in edit, you have, for example, if I copy, if I select a word here, I have the capability to copy it or to cut it and paste it. So it's a, I can use the clipboard facilities inside the clipboard editor. When I'm finished, I click save. And what I can also do, find, find next, find previous, find and replace as you would do in any text editor. And these last items here are additional features that you have access in this editor. So change case. For example, if I want my text to be all toggle case, so it will reverse the case of the current text to the opposite. So I can return to what it was before, or you can make it all uppercase, all lowercase as uh, you would need. Title is to put the beginning of each word to be a capital letter. So that's uh, one of the, the tools. Uh, you can add prefix fixed or suffix. So I'll take an example. First, going to a list of URLs that we have here. And let's say, for example, that I have this list of URLs in the clipboard. So it's, you don't see it here because you, we are currently editing something. So if I cancel what I was doing in the editor, it will revert to the current content of the clipboard, which is what I just copied here. And what I want to do in these list of uh, URLs is to add something at the end. So that's where you will use, first I will click edit. You will use the suffix that will add something at the end of each line of the clipboard. So if I add, uh, not this, if I add, oh, I just wrote, Windows V should have the... Yeah, I, I, I missed my copy here. I have shortcuts in my regular environment that I don't have in this demo environment. Gotcha. So I will copy what I want to add here at each line. So in fact, just as often you have to do that when you have URLs in, uh, you want to add link that will give additional right. uh, tracking or additional features. So it's, it's just an example here. So when I click go, it will add this to every line of the, the and, editor. Jean, I just want to also clarify something for people to, is you're not saying your tool is like amazing at this search replace stuff, right? It, the point is you can basically kind of like write a macro. So feud going forward, it's very simple and fast to do, right? You, you you don't have to go manually click. Your tool helps with a GUI, you know, kind of do pro programmatic things, but then you can have it as a program that you can very quickly do it later. Yeah, and you talked about creating macros, which you can do when you use the rule editor, the rule manager that we will see in a second. Cool. In the editor, there's no macro or no auto add key capabilities in the editor itself, but you will see in a minute what we can do with, with the rule managers, which is very powerful. So here I could save it. And then uh, let's say I return here and I paste it and just hide this window for a minute. So you see the text that was in my clipboard being 
based oh. here. So it, here it is, we are working interactively. The other example I can show you also is, um, where is it? It's, uh, I will just remove the always on top here for a second. Uh, I have a list of songs here. And often I receive music in my other job, if you wish. And often the name that are, the, name, the title of the songs in iTunes, when I receive it, it's not something clean as with song that has been already distributed or bought from iTunes. It is, I receive files directly from the music distributors. And for example, here we, I know that this is the title of the song, but before there are characters that will give the order of the songs. And at the end, there are some characters that will tell which kind of encoding or the MP3 extension. So what I want to keep here is only this part. So what I can do, I can copy this to the clipboard, return to my editor. And what I can do with substring, which is the last option I wanted to show you in the editor, is to say that what I want to keep from this is starting at the character number six, which is this character here. So we'll start from character six to the beginning of underscore CA here. Cool. And what it will do, it will just keep the part that I wanted. So if I cancel and I just return to show you more options that we have in this very powerful dialog box, we can select from the start or for a given position or for a given at the beginning or from the beginning or from the end of some text that you can type here with an offset if you wish to have just one before, a few ones before, a few ones after, okay? I think I cover every possibilities. If you think of some, something else, tell me. And here you can go for a given number of characters. So from start for five characters, for example, or from until five characters before the end. So that's what we would get with this. Or to the beginning of some text or to the end of subtext with, with um, an offset here. So that's very powerful and you could, can do it in the editor itself. But what we, what we will see now, unless you have questions, Joe, is how we can also do it in the rules manager. No, all I was gonna say was I, you know, I have some tools, especially for editing the names of files and uh, that do some of what you're demonstrating here. However, they're so complex that um, it makes it tricky. And so I, I like the simplicity of your design of just keeping it simple, right, and, and, and straightforward and directly connected to the clipboard. And when you will see the rules, there are also evolution that will, when I say that you can influence the features of the software, I'm thinking for example, of something that would allow to copy files in mm -hmm. the uh, in your file manager and paste it and do some transformation to the name file, the files of the name in, in your, directly in, your um, uh, your explorer. Cool. Yeah. So that's what you will understand more when I explain what cool. is the uh, the the rule manager. Is, I do have one question. Um, is yeah. this uh, UTF eight? What what you know? What compatibility as far as the text? It, it works with the format in the in the clipboard, which is Windows text with end of line being carriage return line, line feed. And it depends on what is in the clipboard. So uh, it will work with it as is. Um, it can be UTF, it can be NC. Okay, thank you. Right. Right. At some point, I could have features to convert the content of the clipboard to from one to the, from NC to uh, UTF or uh, UTF-16. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, that's kind of things that could be done later. Yeah, or, and, uh, and you know, pre-built things like replacing your special characters with their HTML equivalent or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. There's a lot you can do already with the rules if you know how to code some snippet of script scripting uh, using a toad key. So we'll see that where you could do these kind of changes automatically. So let's close the editor and open the other window, which is the rules manager. Can also be opened with Alt middle mouse. Yeah, so you have here a list of rules that are pre-built 
And of course, you can add your rules. You can edit the rules that are there to change what uh, is already there. You could remove or copy rules. And the idea here is that these rules are available and here the rule that you can you will move on the right side will become active when a rule is active it is applied at any time you copy something to the clipboard so for example if i select here lowercase and i click here activate rule it will be added here i could activate more than one rule if i want to have more actions being done but let's start simple here so if i and i will also open I have many windows in the very small demo window here, but let's try make it being all visible at once. And I will make this one always on top. Okay, so the lowercase rule is enabled. It means that each time I will copy something here, it will be copied to the clipboard, but all in lowercase. Or if I change this rule, I remove it. I will create a new rule to see how you can create a rule. So here you select the type of rule that you want to create. What we are doing here is change case. And we will just name it like this. You can name a category which will help to sort your rules and later to filter them. Some notes if you wish. And uppercase save. This rule is, which was named demo. I will just rename it by editing demo uppercase. Save. So where is it? It's here. So I can double click or press the arrow here to activate this rule. And from now on, what I copy here will be copied to the clipboard in uppercase. So that's how you can create rules and enable them or disable them by clicking the left arrow or this arrow that will remove every rule if you have more than one. I'll have an example now where we can use more than one rules and using the replace, the find and replace rule. So just before, if we, I'll just review the, the categories of rules. Find and replace is find and replace with some options that we will see. Change keys, we've seen that. Convert format for now is very limited. It will just change the format to the text format. So if it has bold or things like that, it will be uh, converted to plain text. So it's, but our, there's much more to do uh, under that and also more research to do to be able oh, to yeah. do that. Yeah. Auto at key snippet is where you can if you know how to code uh, to use the auto key scripting or programming language, you can have a small pieces of auto key code that will be applied to the content of the clipboard each time you copy something to the clipboard. Prefix and suffix are as what we've seen with the editor. It will add something at the beginning of the clipboard or at the end of the clipboard or at the beginning and the end of every line of the clipboard if you select the option to apply this change to every line. And substring is some, what we've seen earlier also in the editor. So for now, let's uh, look at uh, the example that we have here, which are find and replace. And I have two rules. The first rule here, it will find HTTPS wikipedia.org and replace it with a server address. So for example, if you have a list of URLs that are for uh, to be used in, um, in a browser, but you would like to convert them to be able to use them in a file manager on your server and you know that a given URL will be can be transformed to a given path here with, you know, so just an example, but often you, we have to transform things from some, and there's a, a clear structure that can help us to transform that. So here, each time I will copy a URL from Wikipedia, it will be, the clipboard content will be transformed to that. And the second rule here is that it will also change all the forward slash to backslash because on the web you have forward slash, but on your network you have backslash. You know, so, and John, I, sorry for interrupting you, but um, it just yeah. reminded me, like when I was at Texas Instruments, we had our testing stuff, which was all in our dev environment, and then we would go to publish it. And a lot of that 
people would go in and manually do a search replace, kind of like you're doing. However, of course, the bad part is you can manually screw that up, right? You might miss something. Once you create a rule like this and you test it, you're good yeah, to go, yeah, right? Yeah, Which is great. Of so anyway, right. yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. So here, there, I will enable these two rules by clicking this for the first one and this for the, this one. So when I copy something to the clipboard, it will execute this and after it will execute the second rule. So let's go here to the browser and I will copy this URL here. And what I will get, you've seen there have been two changes. The first one replaced the root part of the, UR, of the URL. That was that before. And the second rule replaced the forward slashes that we have here to backslash. So I can do it to any page of Wikipedia, uh, copy. So you see the same transformation has been done. So it's something that, that is done live for a given amount of time. And I have just to talk about the duration of the rule. So let's me switch back to this, uh, the rule manager. I will always remove that. So the rules here will stay active until you remove them, but there is a timeout because I, by using it, I realized that you, lose, you, use, you do what you have to do with the rules and then you forget it and you do something else. And later, it can be two minutes later, you copy something and oops, it's, it's being transformed. Oh no, I forgot to disable the rules. So you would have or, to- Or worse. Rules. You know, someone else is using your computer or you just completely forget, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and it, anyway, it, it can be really discombobulating. Yeah. yeah. So um, what you uh, can do, of course, is disable them manually. But after a given timeout that is in the, set in the, in the file, they, the rules will be removed by themselves if you don't use them. As long as you use them, they will stay active, but after a given amount of time that you didn't use the rules, it will be removed automatically. And to change it, you go in the options here. Of course, when you change the options, you have to restart the application after that. And here's, there's a lot of options. I won't review all of them for now, but there's a section that is called rule rules window. Yeah, this one here. So there's a timeout, which is by default, it's, it is 60 seconds. You could make it longer. Could make it shorter depending on your uh, your usage, well, and later it will be possible to set a timeout different for each rule. So some rules cool. you could want them to be permanent. You will always want. Uh, you had an example about a company name that you want to it to be yeah. formatted correctly, for example. So that's a, a, a rule that you want to be always active, and some others will be for long, longer time, though for a short term. So it depends on your needs. So I, I got a clarification on something and a couple of questions for you. So the first, just to clarify, because you said the default is 60, it said 120. Just to clarify, yeah. those are in seconds, right? So yours was not the default value. Exactly. Right? I changed it yeah. myself because yeah. I prefer to make it shorter and let the user decide how much longer you wish. Sure. I just didn't want people to think they had to multiply by two or something, you know, like, no, no. Wait, wait a minute, right? No, so it was... this, yeah, it's fine. I think people get it. The second question though I had was you said, Hey, they go away if you haven't used them. But in my head, so I'd be like, well, wait a minute. If I'm constantly copying to the clipboard and it's on, you know, would that get used? But in the case of like with Wikipedia, I could be copying stuff to go to uh, theautomator.com, right? And it wouldn't it wouldn't count. Is that the point? Like, because it, it doesn't have that in there? Is that? Yes, it will count because it is something oh. that is copied to the clipboard. Because your URL does not include wikipedia.org, it will not be fine and replace in you, if you copy something from somewhere else. But each time you copy something to the clipboard, it will be uh, it will be uh, counted. So you really have to, if okay. you uh, you really so have to deactivate it yourself. It's just if you go away from your computer and come back in a few well, minutes. Well, that's what it boils down to, right? You it's forget not the that there's using, a yeah, of it. It's the copying to the clipper. Thank yeah. you. If you clipper. use it, you yeah. you you should disable it yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, any, I, I was just thinking you could have a monitoring the time of it last used the rules and then you know trigger off of that. It's something to consider, right? Yeah. But anyway. 
Uh, okay. There's a lot, to, a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can right. also have uh, options later that will say apply this rule only on this window, so only in Windows Explorer, right. for example. So, but right. not in your text yeah. in your word processor. Yeah. Or there's a lot more that can be done with this product. It's just the beginning. It's beta version 0 0.1 that we have here. Okay. Right. Um, the last thing I want to show you in the rule manager is the type of rule, which is um, uh, auto add key snippet. So I will just edit this one here. So we have here a text box where you can enter auto add key language uh, codes or script. You need to know that. If you don't, uh, you can learn it. Uh, if there's a lot of to learn about auto at key uh, and Joe Glein's channel can, of course, help you with this. I put a few uh, links here on things that can be very useful. For example, uh, substring, in string, some loops. You could loop inside the content of every line of your clipboard to apply some commands. And I you see. have a list of all the commands that are available here. So if you First don't know a big one for me as well. Yeah, Stress yeah, button. yeah. yeah. Uh, also, also, yes. So just as an example here, I, there's a command which is message box. So it will show a message box that will so it will sh it will show a message box that will write your clipboard content contains and here the content of your clipboard. So I will enable this rule. And now if I go here and copy this, it will show this dialog box showing the content of my clipboard, which ended here with this N. If I copy something longer, um, I have a second rule that I can show you here. So instead of this one, I will enable this one here, which is a little more complex. So it has an if. If the, the length of the clipboard is longer than 500 characters, it will show only the five first five the first 500 characters of the clipboard and if not it will show the whole clipboard as we've seen before so you can have condition you can have loopings you can allow a lot of things here that you can do with uh, auto at key so enable this here and now if i return to this text i'll take something maybe longer in the random article so I guess that this should be longer than 500 characters. So it say here, the 500 first characters of the keyboard are, and it stopped at after this number of characters. If I select something shorter, it will put the whole content. So that's how this uh, item here works. So there's a condition that will say if, so if this do that, if, and else do something else. So it's basic auto at key coding, but for those who are not familiar with auto at key, uh, it can be a way to uh, learn some pieces of this very powerful language. So that's uh, an overview, Joe, of this um, the, these tools. I, rem I remind you there are two windows. The two windows have some things in common, for example, options, windows, which allows to switch from one window to the other or show both if you I want to work with both. And uh, there is some help on the quick access pop-up, uh, quick access clipboard website. Uh, there are screen captures. The video that we're doing will, will be presented here. Here's an old video that we've done a few weeks ago, Joe, but it will be replaced with this new video. And you have a list of features here. So if you want to review everything that can be done with this tool, it's here. And finally, if you want to give feedback to send bug reports, you can go to the Quick Access Clipboard Forum. It's on the Quick Access pop-up forum, but there's a section dedicated to Quick Access Clipboard here. So and then ex explain to people how, if they're interested, how they're going to, you know, sign up or, you know, get. Yeah, they just have, they just have to go to the website and there will be a link to download from here okay. and they can get, uh, they can access the forum here to give more. For now, it's just, you know, it's, it's an alpha, uh, um, there's an alpha testing section uh, that we don't see in here. It's, it's a private section. But uh, everybody will have access to the beta, uh, quick access clipboard beta uh, test section to uh, give their comments, feedback, suggestion, and of course, bug reports. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that looks pretty impressive. And 
again, it's something to wrap your brain around. You, you may not think that you have this need, but trust me, we all really have this need, right? Like it's kind of crazy uh, that a tool out here doesn't exist that does a lot of this because it's, it's, it's something that I do all the time. And, and Sean and I were both talking about it. I'm like, you know what? I was, I built something, but I'm like, that tool will suffice in several of the things I'm already doing with it. So it's awesome. There's a lot of, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, in the, the clipboard editor, did I show you that you can use the history? So if I do control uh, Windows oh. V, so here is oh. the clipboard history from Windows. It could be the clipboard history from Detour or WinClip or any other product that, uh, not WinClip, or any, any other uh, clipboard history. And when I select here, at night time, it will be changed here. So oh. I could also, nice. let me just return here. So here and that's Windows have, V that pulls this up if you're not Windows familiar. V. And and you Windows have, 10. <laughs> in Windows 10, and you have yeah, to enable that the first time if it's not already uh, enabled. Uh, yeah, I just forgot to mention that uh, earlier. Uh, but yes, what I wanted to, to say that uh, when you do uh, programming, when you do editing, uh, you use uh, the clipboard all the, always. You're always using the clipboard. Oh. And there are better ways to use it with this tool than only with the basic uh, Windows features. Well, well it, it... And John, I mean, everything you said is just spot on right. But but my point more is it's so often we repeat what we do using the clipboard, right? Like so often it's really, I wish there was a program that would monitor what we're doing and be able to tell you, hey, you just did this. Like we should add this. Yeah. A, and, and, and you repeat uh, also, you know, things like, okay, I want to remove this. Then I go to the end. I go back. Oh, okay. Here, one line is done. Second line. And, uh, right. Right. Yeah, you know, that's right. that's what you do always. So it will save your keyboard. It will extend the life of your keyboard <laughs> if you use this tool. And I'm your sure. sanity. Um, the, the, but you like, it, like I said, at TI, um, me and other people that I work with in different groups, they had very particular, like, oh, every time Texas Instruments is here, you have to have the trademark signal in a certain way, very formal. This is a great thing that can monitor for those kind of stuff. Every time this yeah. is in here, make sure it's here, you know. It, it's really cool. Yeah. So more awesome. to come. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you, Joe. Talk to you soon.